All right, let's do it. Well, welcome everyone. Namaste uh, to everyone and welcome to Hindi University. Um, really excited to have all of you this Sunday. Um, as you know, we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. Um, U.S. specific time, um, which is the time in the east west coast of the U.S. And we learn about the Hindi language. Um, for those of you who are new to Hindi University, uh, you can learn more about us by going to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Hindi University, uh, and you can find more information. Um, you can also go to our main page, which is uh, tiny.cc slash Hindi University. Uh, where you will find all the courses are structured systematically. Um, so based on your level, you can brush up some of the previous concepts or you can get started from scratch. Okay. Uh, it also gives you information about how to join the Sunday classes and the practice sessions that we have pretty much on a regular basis. Um, based on your location, you can also check the time that will be uh, during the, the class uh, in this page, time.cc. Um, as you all know, we've been working on the book systematically, which is Teach Yourself Hindi, uh, which is a book written by Professor Rupert Snell. Uh, you can get a soft copy here or you can um, order the, the, the hard copy as well. Um, we've been going over many chapters and um, we are starting a new chapter today, which is chapter 17 uh, from this book. Um, which is conditional sentences. Uh, this is the topic that we have covered in the past as well. So we'll start with like brushing up uh, some of the previous things that we discussed when it comes to conditional sentences. So it'll be a quick recap for a lot of you, okay? Um, this is definitely an intermediate to an advanced level topic. So uh, does require some familiarity with uh, Hindi words. Uh, it does require familiarity uh, uh, that you should be familiar with uh, the Hindi, Hindi tenses, how to use uh, basic Hindi sentences in in, in present, uh, past and future. And also your understanding in Hindi subjunctives. Okay, so if you missed any of those topics, I do encourage you to, 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 to remain a little patient and go back to this tiny.cc and see if, you know, you can select this particular topic and brush up the concepts. Okay, um, with that being in mind, as you all know, um, it is... Um, Pretty interactive class, so feel free to, to ask questions as many times as possible. If you have questions, most likely other people are thinking for the same question. So don't be shy, okay? And don't be afraid to make any mistakes. That's the whole point, right? I mean, nobody expects you to just uh, know uh, from the get-go, okay? So with that being in mind, let's start with conditional sentences. Conditional sentences. So conditional sentences, as you know, uh, just like in English, these are the sentences where we have two clauses, okay, clauses, clause one and clause two. You can have multiple clauses as well, but these are the two clauses which are joined together with some condition, okay, something like if this happens, then this will happen, okay, uh, just like in English, okay. If this were to happen, then that would be, be a possibility, okay? There are multiple ways you make conditional sentences in, in English. Just like that, we have conditional sentences in Hindi as well. Uh, the grammatical structure is slightly different in Hindi, um, and Hindi speakers also use them interchangeably. Uh, while English defines it that, you know, the first sentence is present indefinite, the second one has to be in future indefinite. Similarly, if you have a word construct in the first one, you would have a would construct in the second one, okay? Hindi is slightly flexible there. And Hindi speakers, they often tend to, to kind of like you use them interchangeably, okay? So if you've experienced that, don't be too hard on yourself, okay? So um, that's basically a little bit about, uh, you know, conditional sentences. This con sentences which are connected with some conditions. So if this were to happen, then, you know, uh, B will happen, okay? Um, an example is, if it rains, uh, if it rains, okay, one minute, I'm gonna mute. So examples are, is if it rains, my car will get wet, then 
my car will get wet okay so there is a condition if something happens clause one then b will happen okay typically in english you know um the second one then is optional typically typically you can say if it rains you take a pause and say my car will get wet it is implied that you know action b will happen in hindi it's converse in hindi to use the conditional sentences you will use a keyword called agar agar or yadi then your clause one and then you will have to okay so you have again just repeat it you in, in, in hindi you will say agar or yadi a happens to b will happen let me write it down in in devnagari as well so you have agar or optionally some people use uh, yadi as well okay agar to condition b will happen now as i said like in english a lot of times you will notice that this is omitted it is implied when you say if it rains my car will get wet okay in hindi on the on the other side this can be optional barish hogi to meri car geeli ho jayegi okay you see i didn't really have to use other or yadi for this class i i recommend that you use both of them because that's the right way to learn it even though you're using an extra you know word here uh, but that's the way to go about it the more you practice it and then once you get comfortable then you can play around with like you know i just want to say uh, condition 1 to condition b will happen okay any any question so far so far you only covered definition all right so if no questions let's get going and let's you know use some more sentences to to get it exactly and as i as i go over this you know a session i do want you to think about uh, different conditional sentences that you would like to use in your day to day conversation don't don't think about the bookish sentences um because at times in the class we may use those but from your perspective think about some more practical you know sentences okay so let's start with the simple one uh which is basically some more examples first we'll do it in english if um if you invite me then i will come that's another example of conditional sentence right if this condition happens then second will happen if i get a scholarship i will go to the university okay so now imagine scenarios where you are thinking about future events where we are talking about future events in this case you will notice in english the first one is in present So think about these are the the level zero one conditional sentences, okay? Uh, the first the first sentence is written in present indefinite tense. That's the form of the verb you have, and the second clause is in future indefinite. So right now we are talking about those sentences where the first one is in present indefinite, right? I get a scholarship. uh then the second scenario will happen okay future indefinite how does it work in in hindi in hindi i have to say it multiple times so so bear with me because uh, this is important so think about it is like you have agar and to construct 
Okay, so I'm going to erase it just to use more space. So you have agar and to. Now there is a possibility of which forms of verb you should be using in between. And Hindi is a little bit flexible there. While in the level 0, level 1 sentences in English, the first one is present indefinite, the second one is future indefinite. In Hindi, this is how it works. So you can have the first sentence in present indefinite and the second one is future indefinite. Okay, you can have the first one both as future indefinite. This can also be in future indefinite. The third one is where the first clause will be in subjunctive. Subjunctive and the second one will be in future indefinite. However, the meaning will change um, where the likelihood of the first event, it basically um, changes based on which um, word form you are conjug conjugating the first clause. If, both of, if the first one is present indefinite and the future indefinite, the likelihood of this happening is neutral. So I'm going to just write it here, neutral. Which is basically, if it rains, my car will get wet. The likelihood, if you say the same sentence in Hindi, agar barish hoti hai, to meri car gili hogi. The likelihood of rain happening is neutral. Okay, so that's the difference. In the second one, when you have future indefinite and future indefinite, the likelihood is it's likely that it will rain. Agar barish hogi, to meri car geli hogi. Okay? We will go over in the detail. Okay? So don't worry about making the sentences yet. Right now, just understand the difference that based on the pair you're using, there is a subtle difference in the, in the way uh, the first event will happen. Okay? Third one, if the first sentence is subjunctive and the second one is future indefinite, which is agar barish ho, to meri kaal giri hogi, it's less likely. It's less likely that this event will happen. Okay? Agar barish ho, to meri kaal giri hogi. Okay? Um, so right now just write it down. Let's use some more examples. Okay? To get you guys all comfortable and we'll do multiple examples so that it becomes sort of a, you know, a common knowledge then. Hopefully you got a chance to write it. So let's do, let's do some examples. Which is basically, I'll start with a simple one. If he comes, we will meet. If he comes, I'm going to not write then, but it's implied. We will meet. Okay, so I do expect the basic sentences, all of you are familiar with it. If not, you can hang in there, it'll just come slowly. Okay, so let's start with the very first one. Okay, I'm gonna ask some of you, uh, one of you at least, to to help me with, uh, uh, with the sentences. Okay, and if you need more time, feel free to, to, to write it in the chat. Okay, that's completely okay. Um, Let's see, Olinati, you want to unmute yourself and help us? How will you say? Uh, let's try to break it down. Forget about the if and then construct. He comes and we will meet. And so let's do present. First one is present indefinite and the future, future indefinite. So, yes, go ahead. Agar wo aata hai. Okay. To, uh, to, to hum milenge. Very good. To hum milenge. Help here. The word conjugation. What is the word here and what is the word here and how did you uh, 
combine everything together. So, Atahe is in the present simple. Okay, to call it uh, Ana. Ana, Ana to come. Uh -huh. And uh, to meet is? To meet is Milna. And in the future tense, for her, it will be Milna. Okay, awesome. So, what she said is there are two words here. Uh, uh, to come and to meet. To come is Anna, okay, and to meet is Milna, okay. And in present indefinite, for Vah or you know, in informally, you will say Bo as well. Agar Bo, you will remove the Na and you will put Ta here, okay. So, Agar Bo Aata Hai, To, and future indefinite, you will say Hum, because we is Hum, and Milna, you will remove the na and you put enge. Okay? Agar wo aata hai, to hum milenge. Now, in this case, the likelihood is neutral. The likelihood of this thing happening is neutral. The, there is no emphasis. If, you know, just the way it is written, it is a natural thing. This, if, if x happens, y will happen. There is a neutral tone behind that. Okay? Uh, let's do the second scenario where both of the sentences are written in future indefinite. Okay? So let's see. Uh, I'm gonna mute here. So let's see um, who would like to help here. Um, Shanelji, you want to go with the next, next one? Agar wo aayega, uh -huh. to hum Okay, very good. So, agar wo aayega, to hum milenge. You see that in the, you know, in this construct, what we have done is, both clause 1 and clause 2, they are written in future indefinite. This one is as it is, but the verb here is again to come is Anna and uh, because it is um, he and she you will remove Na and um, you will put Ega, Aiega, okay? Because we are talking about a guy, it's Wo Aiega. If it is a girl, agar Wo Aiegi, to hum milenge. Now, in this case is the likelihood of it's happening, it's likely, it's more likely that this will happen. Other wo aayegi, to hum milenge. Okay, the tone is slightly different, it's more towards the, uh, if you have a gradient, where it is neutral, less likely, or likely, this will on the, on this side, right hand side. Okay, now subjunctive, as you some of you remember, it's simple. You make the verb form in future indefinite and you remove the last part. Okay, so let's see. Um, Simona ji? Yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, can you repeat, please? You say that we move. I was thinking it's ao, but I'm not sure. Okay, okay, so I'll, I'll come to that. There was someone asking question, it seems. Yes, I had a question. Go for it. Uh, for Ange, you went to the future tense. That's right. There. So okay. So this one is future. So this is case one, where first one is present indefinite, second one is future indefinite. And this one is both future, future indefinite, future indefinite. In okay, the, I got it. You got it right. In the third one is subjunctive and future indefinite. So, which is what we will do now? We are looking at three scenarios. Okay? Asuji, uh, so, uh, yes. so, I have a question. Go for it. Uh, the first one, uh, agar, agar wo aata hai, can we omit hai? Now that? You can do that, but it changes the meaning of the, the sentence. We will cover that in the, uh, in the next class. Okay, okay. But it is, it is quite possible you, you can do that. That there is a okay. you know there's a different case. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Asha, could you repeat please how we do the subjunctive? Subjunctive. Yeah. So let's say, you know how we have four forms of subjunctive, right? 
the easiest one is you will have I ga and you try to remove this part ga and say the sentence basically. So you. So it's agar wo aaye. Very good. Agar wo aaye, to hum milenge. Very good. To hum milenge. So this is uh, less likely. Less likely of this event or, or the possibility. Agar wo aaye, to hum milenge. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go slow. Uh, in this topic because there are multiple variations to it okay um, as you asked one of you asked recently about like can I remove this you can absolutely do that okay which is like in English if this were to happen that would happen you know changes so in Hindi also if you uh, remove this auxiliary word in this case the meaning will change so for this class we will just master this topic and there's one more scenario that I will cover it okay so, agar wo aata hai, so just remember it for, for clarification. In this one is present, future indefinite. Second one is future indefinite, future indefinite. Third one is subjunctive, future indefinite. Okay. But there are many more that we will be covering. Okay. So, let's do one more example because this may still be not super clear. Okay. So, let's, uh, let's cover more and with the help of some more of you this time I think we should have if any of you is still having difficulty I, I do encourage you to try it out because that's the best way for me to know which part is not clicking okay so let's do this one if it rains slightly harder uh, if it rains we will go Feel free to make changes, we won't go as well, right? that's completely fine. So let's try to make those three sentences that I covered, okay? Some of you, I mean, I do encourage everyone to try it out, okay? Even though I'm going to be selecting some of you, but the whole point is you should try it out, all of you, okay? As an in-class exercise, because that's the best way for me to, to really see everyone's uh, progress, okay? Um, Let's see, JD, you want to unmute yourself and try with the first scenario where you have present indefinite and future indefinite in the second one. No, no. No, okay. What is, let me help you. What is rain in Hindi? Barish. Barish, very good. How do you use it as a verb? Something to happen. Very good. Then a while to happen is hona. Right? Parish hona. Okay? Yeah. So how do I say in present indefinite? So if I have barish hona, is it masculine or feminine? Grain in Hindi, is it masculine? Masculine. Or feminine? Barish hota hai or barish hoti hai? What do you say? What do you think it is right? Masculine. It's feminine. 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 Yes. Yes. Feminine. So, so how will you change from Barish Hona to Barish? Okay. okay. Very good. In future, you will say Hogi. Okay. In present, it would be Ho. Main khata hu, main khati hu. I eat. Similarly, Barish. Hoti. Very good. Barish Hoti. Okay, so how will you say if and then? Agar barish hoti. Okay, agar and then what is the in between clause? Agar and then what is the parallel uh, word to that? To. To, very good. Okay, so now you said it already. Agar barish. Agar barish hoti, finish it up. To. Agar barish hoti hai, very good. To. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. What is the word for to go? Um, ja. 
चल वेरी गुड वेरी गुड चल सो हम वेरी गुड यू सी यू डिड दैट राइट अगर बारिश होती है तो हम जाएंगे The first one is written in present indefinite. The second one is future indefinite. The likelihood is neutral. That is the natural course of things. Right? अगर बारिश होती है, तो हम जाएंगे. Okay? Um, that's a great word right there, Jade. Let's do the second scenario where you have both sentences said in future indefinite. And um, again, someone who thinks it's hard for them, and not necessarily to pick, but to to motivate you, right? Um, let's see, uh, Suvilai, you want to try it out? You have to unmute yourself. Uh -huh. Yeah, go for it. Uh -huh. Yeah, go for it. Is it the second one? Yes. Okay, Akar. बारिश होगी अगर बारिश होगी अगर बारिश होगी तो हम जाएंगे तो हम जाएंगे सो हियर इट्स मोर लाइकली राइट अगर बारिश होगी तो हम जाएंगे ऑसम नाउ लेट्स द थर्ड सिनारियो वेर यू हैव अ सब्जेक्ट ओके लेट्स सी तानिया जी यू वॉन्ट टू ट्राई इट आउट It's very similar to this. You just have to remove something from the first word. That's it. This word. Okay. If you need more time, you can write it as well. That's completely okay. Uh, let's see. Anyone else would like to give this one a try? Um, let's see. Okay. Okay. So let's see, Tom. You want to give it a try? You're raising your hand. Yes, please. Yeah, go for it. Agar, uh huh. Barish. And you told us to form the subjunctive. We simply remove the ending yeah. from the future form of the verb. So agar barish ho. Very good. Agar barish ho. Then our construction agar to is a conditional construction. Yeah. So to, uh -huh. and then the future indefinite for the second clause, which would be again ham jaenge. Very good. Agar barish ho, to ham jaenge. So this is less likely. Okay. Awesome. And what would the translation be, please? So, so it's interesting because the translation in English would always be the same. If it rains, <laughs> we will go. Okay, thank yeah. you. It's just like the the nuance in Hindi of how do you interpret this this sentence. Okay. Um, thank you. So yeah, much. yeah. Yes. So that's a that's a challenge, right? I mean, and, and I have to tell you, even Hindi speakers, if you were to tell them, they will use them interchangeably. Okay. So so you know, it's in their mind because they're so used to it. Okay. It just comes naturally and. Uh, in their mind, it's not like they will go with this order. Whether it is less likely neutral or you know uh, more likely to happen, yeah. But oh, you, you oh, should, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Nandini is saying a clue. If it may rain, you know, then we will go. Right. I mean, I mean, again, like the only difference I could see is in the third one, subject, subjunctive. Should it rain, we will go. The first two is pretty much the same. Okay, in the third one, if you were to really translate it one on one in English, should it rain? Okay, or should he, you know, invite me? Uh, I will meet. Okay. Um, okay. Awesome. Good question, though. So let's do some more examples. Hopefully, if this one is better, this one was sort of strengthening uh, what you just learned. Uh, but now I want you to try it out. Okay. So now this one is a simple exercise again. But for all of you, okay. Um, so this one, I'm going to give you some time, and I want to see everyone's um, help here. So, 
So this one is if she um, if she cooks then uh, I will eat. Simple sentence, you can make it a uh, little bit fancy as well, but let's ask everyone to write down the three uh, scenarios that we have practiced today. Okay? Uh, I'm going to give you guys time. In the meantime, I'm going to see if there are any questions on um, on the Facebook site. And in the meantime, if you guys, any of you have uh, questions as well, you know, feel free to ask. So, Chanel is asking which one is the the... Is it the first part or the second part which is less likely or less likely to happen? What do you think, Shanelji? Let me ask you, based on your understanding, what, what do you think? What do you what do you infer from this? Oh no, I was just getting a bit confused, but yeah. I realized. <laughs> I it's the really first, it's the first part. It's the first part with the yeah. if condition that is less or more likely to happen. Okay, but I'm gonna okay. So I'm gonna give you guys some time, and I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, give you some space so I don't keep on this yeah. so good to have Tarja ji and Stephen Maddie on and and Savi Maharaj on 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 Facebook um, the ask is very simple uh, you guys have to write down these scenarios for this sentence okay if she cooks then I will eat let's see how well you guys doing Trisha, you want to give it a try? Or your microphone is still not working? You can put it on chat as well. If this is hard, that's completely okay, okay? Awesome. All right, let's get to the thing. Unity, you want to give us a try? Give a, help us out here? Louder, louder. Let's come closer. Is this okay? Yeah, much better now. Okay. If I cook a meal, I will eat it. Okay. So if I cook a meal, I will eat it and make it. Right? I mean, so if I cook a meal, I will eat it. Very good. So the word for here, word here is? Word here is pakana. Very good. Pakana is to? To cook. To cook. Okay. And the other one is? The other one is, verb is eat. Uh -huh. Kana. Kana. Very good. While we are on here, pakana can also have, even though the, the predominant if is used as to cook, but somebody is boring the heck out of you, it is also used there, like, you know, why are you, like, you know, uh, cooking me, basically, right, or cooking my head. So it is also used as a slang, okay? Okay, let's keep going, Uni. If I eat food, I will eat food. Second one, Uni. If I eat food, I will eat food. Okay, if I eat food, Third one, me. Okay, very good. So you remove this part. Agar wo khana pakaye, is exactly the same thing. Toh main khaungi. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Okay. Um, hopefully this is better. Uh, how are we doing with time? So we have good amount of time now. We'll do one more example for this, just for this one. Okay. Um, 
the, 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 the three sentences and after that we'll move to the second scenario of conditional sentences. Uh, before I do that, let's take any questions from any of you. If you think it's still not making sense or if it is hard, feel free to, 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 to ask questions. If, I, if you don't ask, then I will ask. Okay, thumbs up, thumbs down, everyone is clear so far? Alright, good. Let's do the, the, the one more uh, example here, okay? Um, and then after that we'll do the condition uh, two. Basically the different level of condition sentence, which is, the next one I have is, if, um, if, uh, the, police, if the police come, he will run away. If the police, if the police come, come, then, uh, let's see, let, then the thief will run away. Let's try to use a compound verb here, run away. Okay? So rather than just simple verb, let's make it a little bit more interesting, otherwise it can be repetitive, right? So let's try to use a compound verb for run away. Um, again, for everyone, for all of you, you should try it on your own, um, although we will do the in-class exercise as well. Okay, so let's see. Um, Radhika ji, and you want to try it out, Radhika ji, the first one? Um, agar pol police aata hai. Okay, agar police aati, okay, police is masculine, so feminine, hmm. sorry. Agar police? Oh, police is feminine, aati hai. Agar police aati hai. Then, to. Uh -huh. um, chor. Sure. Um, Bab jaye, Bab jaye ji, jaye, jaye ga. Oh, very good, very good. So, sure. Awesome. Bab jaye ga. Explain it a little bit more here. What is the word here? What is to run? Ba, bagna. To run is bagna. Okay. What is to run away? Okay. Uh, okay, no, no, basically same thing that we use, which is the compound word here, which is bhag. So compound word we use here bhag jayega, that's bhag jana. Okay, that's what you're using here, which is the right use of it, right? So second one you're saying is bhag jana, to run away. Okay, basically you're adding one more word along with the first one. Just not bhagna, it's bhag jana. Okay? And uh, what you did was you conjugated the jana here. So chor bhag jayega. You could have said chor bhagega. Okay? But as someone noted yesterday in the WhatsApp group, that Hindi speakers, they tend to use compound verbs more frequently. Because that's a day-to-day -day conversation, right? So they will end up using compound verb more frequently. And that's what... Well, that's what you've seen here. So, chor bhag jayega. Okay, awesome. Great, uh, 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 great work there. Nandini ji, you want to uh, try the second one and the third one? Uh, agar, police, huh? I, I, G. Okay, agar, police, I, G. Go, bhag jayega. अगर पुलिस आएगी तो कौन भाग जाएगा? तो वो भाग जाएगा। So here we have a thief. Thief is? Oh, चोर। चोर। Sorry, I have to say the theme. चोर भाग जाएगा। Very good. चोर भाग जाएगा। Okay. You want to do the third one also? अगर पुलिस आए तो Okay, so far so good, right? Uh, neutral, more likely, less likely. 
okay so this was the the first level of conditional sentence okay um, if you had didn't get a chance to ask questions now feel free to send me on 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 whatsapp or on the facebook group now we'll jump to the scenario 2 okay in the scenario 2 uh, the first clause the verb conjugation happens in the perfect tense okay in perfect tense so you will be using the perfect form of the verb okay um, second remains as it is okay let's see how how it changes the meaning of the the sentence so Nandini ji I'm gonna pick on you uh, again in this case oh it's okay so what what is the verb here in the first case uh, Anna what is the past perfective form of Anna it's a male police or female police if she can I or Naya. Police, police, police generally is, is feminine here. Even if a man police comes, yeah, still yeah. Yeah. the unit is considered feminine. Okay. Okay, there's a there's a okay. like a slang I, there's a slang word for male police, like you know, but I don't want to say it. It's this thing is public, right? So so I okay. Okay, I that's correct. So let's write it down, the same sentence. The only change you are making okay. here is you are using the first clause and you are using the perfective form of the verb. Okay? Based on the, the noun that you have. So, agar. Agar. Police. I. Uh -huh. To. Chor. Ba. Bhaag jayega. Okay. To chor. Bhaag. Jayega. What do you think? It, how how does it change the meaning? Does that does that mean if the police had come, then he would have run away or something like that? I think. Okay, okay, that's close. Anyone else? Anyone else? What do you guys think? Is this the case where there it's the let's assume or supposing? Yeah, so that that's right. That's exactly right. It means supposing. Okay. Hmm. Give, okay. Yeah. So it, it means agar police aayi. So what you've done is I'm gonna write down the, the rule here. So the first sentence a uh, word you are using is a perfect form and it becomes supposing. Okay, supposing or given, given the police come, this will happen. Okay, um, that's what it changes the meaning to. Like if the police, like you know, suppose police comes, then the event B will happen. Okay. Okay, let's see some more examples. If this is, I'm sure like this, just this is, may not be helpful. Right, I mean, what do we mean by supposing? Right, it could still create doubt in the mind. So let's do some more examples here. It just, I was looking at this yesterday yeah. and trying to wrap my mind around it, of like how I could say it in my mind that this is the uh, perfective, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So the only thing I could come up with was like, uh, um, if we, let's see, uh, assuming the police, no, that wasn't it. I had it, and then it's gone again. It's okay. Let's assume, let's assume the police came, uh -huh. then then the thief would uh, the thief would run. That is correct. That's let's correct. assume the police came. Like you're already putting yourself out there, like it already happened. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's exactly right. Like, okay. Because if, if I think about supposing, I think more. It feels more like subjunctive. Like it's. You know, you know, you're just thinking about it. Yeah. If, if like, you assume that it's a done deal, then it's like a, then then it makes sense to me that it would be path. It would be the the past, just yeah. a simple path. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You're saying is like you know, if I use um, supposing in the literal sense, it becomes like a a possibility that may or may not happen, and that basically mind drives your mind to use a subjunctive, but. If you use that framework, let's say 
you know, uh, let's assume this happens, then it helps, right? Assuming assuming that happened, then this would happen. Yeah, that's something. Good. I don't know. It's hard to wrap my mind around this first one. Yeah, like yeah. I, mean, I think that, yeah, that that's exactly right. I mean, we are trying to assuming I would supposing assuming that I would put in the same category. Okay, so let us we we did the three sentences for this one. Okay, which is other barish aati hai, to I change the sentence. So hum nahi jayenge. Agar barish aayegi, to hum nahi jayenge. Agar barish aayi, okay, aaye, okay. Agar barish aaye, to hum nahi jayenge. Now there is a subtle change here. Okay, you want to say can you see how we use it in the in the in this conditional sentence where you're using the perfective form? How will you say the sentence? Sorry, I'm still just trying to wrap my mind around. Okay, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll help you out. What is to rain here? Like to. Okay. Just trying to. Okay, so agar um, uh, barish hui. Uh, okay, very good. Agar barish. Agar barish hui. Okay, and then um, and then it's gonna be. Just future, right? That's right. Exactly the same. Okay, so we are not going to Very good. Okay, this might be throwing you off, but remember the verb here is hona. Okay, for the perfective form, it's basically hua, hue, hui, and hui. This nasalized sound. You guys recall that, okay? Because barish is considered uh, feminine singular, you are using agar barish hui, okay? Agar barish hui, to ham nahi jayenge, okay? Um, let me write it down some more sentences. And this time I'm going to do a reverse exercise, which is I'm going to write it in Hindi, and you will tell me not the English translation. Sorry, I should change. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Um, if, if you wrote it as uh, if it rains, then my brain will automatically translate agar barish Yeah, so the, the don't don't worry about the English part that I wrote because I wrote it yeah. in the first I wrote in the first form. Right? Uh, uh, my, my point was to think about that sentence in the in this way, uh, okay. assuming it rains. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's why it's like you know now now try to think it completely in Hindi. Let's say the sentence is Agar Agar wo aaye Agar wo aaye to hum milenge Okay, what do you guys think it means? It doesn't have to be exact translation in 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 english okay agar wo aaye i could also say agar wo aayi agar wo aayi i don't know this one is the much easier for you agar wo aayi to hum milenge agar wo aayi to hum milenge Like assuming she's she yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we'll meet. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Supposing she comes, we will meet. Okay. Same thing. Let's say you were to say the scenario that you know, if someone were to get a, a scholarship, okay, they will go to the university. In this form, how will you write it down? If someone, you know, they get the scholarship, Chanel, you want to give this one a try? This one is, um, so what was it? If let's say you were to get you get a scholarship, okay, you will go to university, okay. You have to write it in this set conditional sentence where the first form of the verb is conjugated in the past participle or perfective form. So, agar mein scholarship mili, okay, to main university jaungi. Okay, one more time. The first one, agar. 
मैं और देस अ पोस्ट पोजीशन बिकॉज़ यू आर गेटिंग समथिंग राइट अ मुझे वेरी गुड सो मैं कस हो या मुझे अगर मुझे स्कॉलरशिप्स ओके बिकॉज़ स्कॉलरशिप इस टाइम में आया अगर मुझे स्कॉलरशिप मिली तो तो मैं यूनिवर्सिटी जाऊंगी वेरी गुड तो मैं University Chaudhary. Okay, which is basically assuming I get the scholarship or suppose I get the the scholarship, then I will go to the university. Okay, and that's why you are changing the form to the the Milna. In the previous three cases, you know you said Milta. I'm going to write down all of them. So you said Milta. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, milegi, and the third one is mile. That's what we have, right? In the the in the first conditional sentence, we have three sentences: present indefinite, future indefinite, subjunctive. In this one, only this part is changed, okay, to the past participle form, which is um, milna becomes mili. अगर मुझे स्कॉलरशिप मिली, नाउ दिस में भी हार्ड फॉर 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 सम ऑफ यू बिकॉज़ पास पास फॉर्म्स आर यूजुअली हार्ड, राइट? सो आप चीज़ जस्ट सो आई थिंक सी फाइव रिलेट सो इट्स ऑलमोस्ट लाइक वर सेइंग लेट्स अस्सुम इट्स अ डन डील इट्स ऑलरेडी हैपेंड कैन इट बीन राइट लाइक आई मीन आई जस्ट ट्राइ टू थिंक ऑफ हाउ आई कैन गेट इट इन माय माइंड दैट दैट्स पास बट इट्स कैन लाइक लेट्स अस्सुम आई आई ऑलरेडी गॉट अ स्कॉलरशिप आई गो टू यूनिवर्सिटी अम That one is hard to pin pin it, um, you know, uh, Kelly G. Even in English, when a sentence is put into you, like how would you infer it? Like you know, there is a possibility though, right? I mean that you know, if if you were to get, I mean again, I want to say I I were to do this thing because there is a separate conditional sentence for it. But this is something like if this were to happen, then that would like you know, the event B will happen. Right. Uh, supposing I get the scholarship, you know, I will go to the university. Now you might say, "What do you mean by supposing I get the university? You know, I get the scholarship." Um, let's see if anybody ha- else has any trick or you know, um, a- any any scenario that you can think of that can that can help comprehend the uh, the sentence a bit more. Let's see. to find a way that it because it's past you know yeah because otherwise i don't go past shall i you want to share what are you saying if all was to okay say it yeah it's just like okay. i mean it, it's a different it doesn't translate directly but if i was to get the scholarship okay so <laughs> yeah 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 anyone it's else kind of in the past but it's still kind of if this happens If I received it, yeah. Let's see, Kinga, you have any thoughts? Oh yeah, I was wondering uh, if we can replace this fourth um, uh, version by uh, one of the previous ones, like uh, depending of how much probability there is there, uh, or by not not sure or likely. Or less likely, because supposing it is uh, oh, well. Uh, Uh, there is some probability, but we don't really know how much. That is correct. Supposing you will in the gradient, where will you put it, right? Because yeah. you're not really. This is that's why it kind of created a different category of conditional sentence. Um, so that's why you are not, you know, even Upar, even Rupert Snell is covering it separately. He is not covering it in the same same case. Uh, Ashji, may I may I suggest something? Yeah, yeah, please. That this is the the discussion part. So it's. Any any idea that I'll come right now? Although we're using the perfective tense here to express this idea, it's not a past idea we're expressing. It's just using this tense to express supposing, which is close to present progressive, for example, mm-hmm. or even if, or given that. So the verb is not expressing a past tense necessarily. Assuming that, for example, is another translation here. 
So the nature of the expression is conditional. We're using a past tense form, but the nature of the expression itself is given that or supposing that or even if that yeah. happens almost present yeah. tense, even if that happens. This is pretty clear actually. Yeah, yeah it's pretty clear. You the, the way you said it, it has even though we are using the past form, it has nothing to do with the past form. Right, I think if that may be throwing off people, this has nothing to do with that this happen, event happened in the past. Um, it's just like the, the notion that given that, assuming and supposing. Yeah, that was, pre that was pretty good actually, Tom. Anyone else? Heather, you want to share your thoughts? Oh, um, I was just trying to think of it um, because the perfect tense is to explain something that happened before something else. So kind of clause one, you're assuming it has already happened already, even though it didn't. Yeah. So it's like, if this were to happen, then clause two would be true. But it, the other makes it, so even though it's in past tense, it's still implying that it- Hasn't happened. Is still in the world of possibility to happen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. So, Kelly G, we probably have to, you know, do some more Yeah. It's difficult. This is a hard topic, right? Seven, chapter 17. Okay? Next chapter will wrap up the book. So, it's, you know, don't, <laughs> if you're feeling it hard, don't, 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 don't be too hard on yourself, basically. <laughs> sure, I just had uh, also one thought about this. Uh, when we say it, it suppose it, uh, it is already received, so it's like if, if I have this already, uh -huh. I mean, suppose I already have it because it is received, maybe not as uh, Tom said, as a past uh, action, it, it's something received, it is received, mm -hmm. then I will go. Would that make sense? So, in this case, let's say scholarship. How would you make sense of it in your mind that you assuming that you got the scholarship? You so will... uh, assuming that I have this, then yes, I will go yes. because I receive, it is received, then I have it. Yeah. So even though you're so not, you, even field, though I will go. even though you're not received it, but in the possibility, right? I mean, yeah. The... Suppose I have it. Yeah. It is received, and then I will go. I, I think in, in this. It makes sense a bit, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. like we are we are trying really hard to find the English version for it, uh -huh. right? That that's the mind playing game, right? I mean, but but at the end of the day, it's basically uh, the notion is given A happens, B will happen, or supposing A happens, B will happen, right? That that's what it is at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ted. What are you uh, good to have you, man? Uh, could you use man Leah instead of other man Leah? You can, you, you know, I mean, you can do that. I think the question here is, you know, I said you have other or yadi. Okay, in, in some cases, you have mana, you will see the notion of mana also. Or man Leah is nothing but a compound form of it. So you are right there, you will hear the cases of mana or mano. Mano or manlo, that's also another one. These are all form of mana. Manlo. So the same thing if you were to say manlo tume scholarship mili. Mano tume scholarship mili. So, what you to university, you know, Saudi, like, you know, uh, let's say you get the scholarship, will you go to university? Okay, or let's say, you know, you, you get $1 million, will you, will you travel the world? Like, assume, assume let's say, okay, that's another way of saying it. So, uh, thanks for sharing that, uh, Ted. So, we are right on the time. I'm going to stop the broadcast on Facebook. So, um, uh, thank you so much for, for all of you who join on Facebook uh, and uh, 
whenever time permits do join the 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 live session will be great to to see you in person as well but again as time permits okay